On November 16, 2012, a call was made to 911 in Willoughby Hills, Ohio. 18-year-old Sabrina Zunich was walking out of her house, still holding a kitchen knife. Inside the home, the body of Lisa Knafil was discovered with almost 200 knife wounds covering her entire body. Sabrina was arrested and the investigation into the homicide began. Sabrina had been a foster child her entire life. She had been diagnosed with ADHD, anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. She frequently got into fights at school and she struggled to learn and follow the rules. At the age of 16, Sabrina was placed with Kevin and Lisa Knafil, and she moved into their home in Willoughby Hills, Ohio. The Knafils already had two daughters, and Sabrina seemed to fit in well with them. Everything was looking up for Sabrina until her foster father, Kevin, began showing her more attention. During the summer of 2012, Sabrina and Kevin began a relationship that they kept hidden from the rest of the family. Sabrina had fallen for Kevin, so even though she had turned 18 and she didn't have to stay, she continued living with the Knafils. Kevin and his wife would argue about this often, and they even talked about divorce. Kevin had an $800,000 life insurance policy on his wife, and if they were to get divorced, he wouldn't receive any of the money. The police believe that even though Kevin was nowhere near the home when the incident took place, that he was the reason she was dead. Detectives on the case tried to interview Kevin, but he made sure to get himself a lawyer. Were you and uh, Lisa in the process of going through a divorce? Okay, now we're getting outside the uh, scope. Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk to us uh, about any of the situations that led up to what happened? No, I talked to Detective Parmeter. He said he wanted to get okay. interview him about work, which you know I thought was probably a pretext. Okay. But uh, you know, everybody knows where she worked. Well, we never got to talk at length about the we're just sort of sequence of events and what happened. That's what we're just trying to talk about. Well. We're just trying to trying to trying to figure out what what happened that night. Uh, you know, I mean, I you know, I mean, you know, his wife was brutally murdered here, I and we're trying to help help him. You know, help us. He can help us in the investigation. He wasn't within a hundred miles of the house when that happened. I understand that, but he was with them prior to leaving the house, so he can discuss what his, you know, what the house was like prior to him leaving. Um, and we came down to talk to you about what you asked us to talk about. I asked you specifically on the phone what the subject matter was. Correct. All right. Correct. Uh, we didn't have to come down. Mm -hmm. told you no Absolutely. Way. You're right. Absolutely. But, you know, we're not going to get into, you know, the relationship between Kevin and Lisa. It's just, you got, you got a, you got a bloody girl with a bloody knife. You know what, I, I apologize for wasting your time then because... Well, how about your relationship with any of the other children in the household? I mean, what uh, how about your relationship with Sabrina? You didn't discuss anything with Dad? No. Kevin? No. I mean, you can feel free to talk. He's no lawyer sitting right next to him. I understand, or he can still say what he wants to say. Except that we're not going to answer any more questions. Okay, we're done here then. Okay. Thanks for coming. Is there anything we need to know? Appreciate it. All right, see you later. The police would get a second opportunity to interview Kevin, which we have included later in this video. For now, the police hoped that Sabrina would have more to say about why she took Lisa's life. After she received medical attention, Sabrina was brought in for interrogation. What do you, uh, what do you recall? From yesterday? Mm-hmm. Can I download my homework? I don't know, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And what were we at home? Mm hmm. Would anything unusual happen? I don't know. Everything went fine according to what I knew of. Mm hmm. What, what happened? Starting from? 
starting from when you got home from school yesterday. Okay. No. Um, I got home, I went to my home, then we had hamburger helper, and then I went back to doing my homework, stayed doing my homework for like one. I went upstairs, no, it was like 12. I went upstairs, I tried to go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep, so I went to go get some Advil. Mm -hmm. I had to go home. Because my head hurts, because I have really bad headaches. I don't really feel like And after that... Where, did, where, where did you take um, ibuprofen from? In my son, Kevin's bedroom. That's where, where it's held. Kevin and Lisa's bedroom, that's where it's held. Was uh, Lisa still awake? I don't, I don't know. I just remember going in there, having the bottle, starting to shake it to get the meds, and then I'm gone from there. Thank you. Okay. Do you remember what the what the bottle said? Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Wait, there was a word. Okay. Are you are you allowed in the bathroom? Only um to get Advil or something like that. Uh, I call it Advil. It's all right, ibuprofen. Other than that, no, not unless they're there or, you know, we're told to. So what did what Lisa say to you then, when she saw you in there? I don't know. I don't know if Lisa... Did yours? No. I don't remember anything at that point on. What do you remember? Everything except... Were you taking any Ill illegal narcotics yesterday? No. I don't do drugs. You don't do drugs? Unless last time you did drugs. Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago? Okay. Um, you have not had any any illegal drugs since then? Okay. Um, you were at home all, all night yesterday? Okay. Um, after you ate dinner, did you uh, uh, did you have this opportunity to say goodbye to Kevin? I was at the computer desk. You were at the computer desk? I don't know. I went to the living room also because I was printing my bridge slip. I mean, I was in the living room, I was in the kitchen, and I was in the office. Excuse me. I mean, I believe so, yeah, he just said bye, because he always says bye to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we either say bye, Chabala, he like kisses him. Well. Okay. You had an argument or anything with Lisa last night? No. No? Everything was fine. Everything was fine. Okay. Have you had these type of issues in the past where you just don't remember things? I I don't I'm not positive. I mean I know I was in my other group homes. When I was in a fight with other people I blacked out. Mm hmm You you mentioned you've had at your group home incidences where you blacked out and those been physical? What do you mean? Like, did you get in fights? People? Yeah, but it wasn't me hitting them. Mm -hmm. If I get a blow to the head, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Same with my head. Have you hit people before? And I, rem and I remembered it? Like, in the blackout? Yes. But not, I don't, I don't start fights. Mm -hmm. Ever since my first group home, I was 14, I stopped fighting ever since then. What, what do you think you have in your hands? I don't know. I'm just saying that I'm being charged with homicide. Well, I'm right. investigating that. I, yeah. I remember. I'm pretty the sure ambulance. you do. Yeah. And then remember what you were doing prior to getting to the ambulance? No. In Lisa's room? Getting mad. My honey. That's why I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Sabrina claims that she doesn't remember what she did, and she has no idea why her hands are bandaged. If this is true, then she doesn't know Lisa is dead, and the detectives can use her reaction to finding out to see if she is telling the truth. How, how do you get along with Kevin? Kevin and me are cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the one that helps me out. Mm -hmm. Because this is Megan to deal with. Megan has in, in mental instabilities herself. Okay. 
And so we made agreements a long time ago that if I need anything, that I could go to Kevin. Mm -hmm. And if it was major that she needed to be involved in, then he would ask, but not to be concerned about small things. Because mm -hmm. it's already stressing her out. It's her job and Haley and Megan. How about um, with Lisa? How do you deal with her? Me and Lisa have never been the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never tried to hurt her, never had any thoughts of hurting her. Yeah, it's been emotional and mental abuse from her to me. Mm -hmm. She put her hands on me, not fighting, mm -hmm. but restraining me so I wouldn't give an iPod to her. And I don't know. I, I don't know. She never seemed to like me, and she's been wanting me out of the house. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on how Lisa is not alive now? What? What is your What is your thoughts on that? That she is not alive? I, I, maybe you didn't understand. That's That's what we're talking to you about. She didn't kill me. Mm -hmm. She's dead. You should have told me I did it. Yes. I, I, most of that blood was probably hers. That's why we need you to concentrate and think about what happened. There's always two sides to every story. And we want to know what you had to say about it. And we know you were there. You know, there were officers that got to the house after the, you know, they were called. So, we just need you to focus on what happened. You know you got you were doing homework and you know you got yourself to the bedroom to get the medicine. What you need to do now is bring it all together and think real hard about maybe what happened next. And then that'll explain how you got some wounds to your hands. Okay? I've never been a murderer. Mm -hmm. We, we need to know, that's why we're asking you to, to, to think about it, we need to know how to help you, okay? We don't know that until we know, we, we need to get some facts and find out what's going on. And that'll give us the best course on how, how to proceed from here and help you, help the family, and, and go on from there. What do you want me to eat? I don't, we don't truth. want you to say anything except the truth. And we just want you to think about it because something happened by the time you were getting your meds in the bathroom there for your headache. And then and then all then one of our police officers arriving. So something happened in between that time and we're just trying to get to the to the truth of that and find out what happened. I don't know. This is really dead. The yes. is dead. Sorry. And no. Do we have a blanket already or none? You don't have a blanket? Oh my gosh. Don't How'd that happen? happen? Do you want to know what I can tell you what's going to happen from here right now? I mean, do you have questions for me? I mean, you're right, David? Yeah. I mean, or for right now, we're yeah. still doing our investigation, but you're under arrest. Um, you know, Lisa's dead, and it appears that you're responsible for that at this time. So that's what the charge is going to be. But at that point, you're going to spend a weekend in jail, the county jail. We're not going to stay here all weekend. All right? And you'll have a court hearing probably on Monday. And at that time, they'll look to see if you have a bond and what to do. All right, for you. While Sabrina was in jail, Kevin spent most of the life insurance money. He paid off his home, bought cars, purchased another home in Florida, and even took flying lessons. 
Sabrina started to feel like Kevin didn't want her anymore. So in August of 2013, she agreed to testify against Kevin for his role in Lisa's death. Sabrina claimed that Kevin had used her love for him to manipulate her. The day before the incident, Kevin was driving Sabrina to school when he stopped the car to talk to her. He began to cry and he told her that he would end his own life if Lisa wasn't dead. Basically, he convinced me that I wouldn't get caught. We'd pretend like nothing happened. We wouldn't know a robber broke in, make it seem like, you know, tumble the jewelry box and leave the door open, hide the knife, or it was supposed to be a gun. We were supposed to go to a shooting range the week the weekend of what happened. But Lisa got mad when he told her because she wanted to go along. You don't spend any more time with me. You're spending too much time with her. And so that didn't happen because it happened before. If I were to went to the shooting range and know how to use a gun, then it would have been it would have happened with a pistol that his uncle gave to him, wasn't registered in his name, couldn't be followed back to him. I was like, okay, well then, just do it with a knife. And he was like, you want to get that up and close and personal? Like, you want to be that personal? So was your suggestion you use a knife instead of a gun? Correct. I, he had me convinced it was only going to be like 25 years and he would be there for me afterwards and that he would bail me out if it were that you got caught or anything. And I told him, look, you do know I'm risking my whole life, everything that I've done, getting my high school diploma, being able to do everything that I was planning on doing in life. And he was like, well, this is all on you. I don't, I had full trust in him. I don't, I don't know. And I don't trust people. I've never been in love before. And so I don't want to say that's what I blame it on, but that's the only thing I could think of that would completely blind me from all the hints that were dropped, all the, what are you doing? Is this not wrong type thing? Because before I was a manipulator and I was beat at my own game that doesn't happen I was blinded you know from getting the life insurance that he had on her 750 some dollars and we would either get a new house sell the one we had pay off the trailer or the cars whatever and then either get a house or build a new one it was all planned out me and you will have a perfect relationship. Haley can be raised the way she needed to be. Me and you would have a perfect house and you'd have everything you'd want. You'd go to college. It was all going to be a perfect lifestyle. So what made you decide to tell us about Kevin? Because for some reason, I, I'm religious and the truth prevails. And for me to go down for this, when I wasn't the only one involved, it didn't seem right. And... When you start thinking with your head and not your heart, you realize if somebody loved you, they wouldn't let you go down like that. Using Sabrina's testimony, Kevin was indicted and arrested and brought in for interrogation. I want to get your side of the story, and I want it to be truthful. You know, when I go back to my bosses and that, that's, they're going to ask me if you were truthful. If you call, you know, if you gave us a statement as to what we already know and if you're remorseful for being involved in this. So, okay. um, <clears throat> obviously, Kevin, we, uh, Mr. Walt told you some things that uh, we have an indictment against you, okay? And we would like you to talk to us to give us some insight on some things. We have a lot of facts um, as to your involvement in this case. And uh, <clears throat> we would like to know uh, your side of the story and us and what happened. What started to begin, Kevin? When, when did Sabrina come into the house? And how did that all unfold that you became the caretaker? You and Lisa. Um. Kevin explains the events leading up to Sabrina becoming their foster child. At first, she struggled with the rules, but then Kevin says he made her a deal. If she was good, she could stay with the family. She better straighten up. She better start listening. She better not be smoking. Um, well, I laid it on the line from her to her from the get go, mm -hmm. telling her that uh, what we were willing to do to help her, um, 
but as long as she followed the program, she was more than welcome to stay in her house, even after she was out of care, mm -hmm. as long as she stayed in school and followed the program. Um, you know, but then I also told her, I said, uh, you know, as I do with my kids, if you, um, don't follow the rules of the program, then you're out the door. And how did she take that conversation? Um, well, um, she liked the fact that we were willing to, um, you know, let her stay with us. Because mm -hmm. she was really nervous and worried about being out on her own. What was, um, was Lisa part of this discussion or was it just you and Sabrina home? No, it was always all three of us. Okay. All right. So you and, uh, you and Lisa had our, had a discussion with Sabrina within the first month. She goes to this Lake Academy or something similar over there at the Tech, Willoughby Tech Center. Mm -hmm for her 10th grade year. Um, how are things in, in the home during that time period? Like, do you need to talk to Sabrina anymore? No. Uh, on and off. On and off? Okay. And how was she during Christmas? Um. Um, what was the relationship now with Sabrina and Lisa and you? What, how's, how's everything? And Megan and Megan and Haley. Yeah, the family unit. How, how's everything gelling? Um, had its um, good days and had its bad days. Tell us about the good days. The good days, everything went smooth. There was no problems. Kids did what they needed to do. Harmony and all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about the bad days. Mm -hmm. Bad days. You started out with Megan and Sabrina getting into it. Um, or Sabrina. Um, not either not getting away about something and reacting to that, or um, doing something wrong and having to be gotten after. And who would step in uh, and correct her? Would it be you, or would it be Lisa? Mm -hmm. It was equal. Okay. Um, it got to the point to where. Um, Lisa got really frustrated and um, sort of made the decision for Lisa to just deal with Megan and I dealt with Sabrina. At what point, um, when, and when, when did that decision happen? I couldn't tell you. Sabrina, listen to you more? You have more well, influence on her? I don't know if I'd say that, but um, as opposed to Lisa, you know, who had the... I was able to get through to her better, I believe. Um, so obviously when you talk, she listened. Whereas Lisa, she talked and all she heard was wah, 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 wah. That'd be a good analogy. Yeah. But you know the relationship between Sabrina and Megan. My kids grew up together. And they love each other now, but but that's like typical sisters or oh, that's and that's how it was. Brothers yeah. and sisters, you you know, they would be like oil and water, and the next thing you know, they're doing the hair and makeup together and that's hanging true. out, and, uh, having fun, and it was just mind boggling. So, if you could elaborate more on how your relationship with Sabrina developed. Remember, 
Kevin and we asked him for the truth when we came came here. Kevin showed no sympathy or regret during his trial. Kevin was found guilty and he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. After hearing Kevin's sentence, his lawyer told the judge that he believed the jury's decision was absurd. This made the judge very angry. Mr. Knafel maintains his innocence. For the state to suggest that Sabrina Zunik is a victim in this case is as absurd is the jury verdict. Uh, I do not feel that their verdict was absurd, but to say that the efforts of those 12 people is absurd, uh, I take great uh, offense to. I think they did their job. I realize that's not why we're here, but since you put that on the, on the record and you brought that issue before the, the public, I think it needs to be soundly pointed out that it is just simply wrong. Well, Your Honor, you can't call me out on the record without giving me an opportunity to respond. Janet, watch me. Uh, well, Your Honor, Mr. that kind of, I have spoken. I have told you had an opportunity to speak. Excuse me, Mr. Sonoma just told said, yeah. fuck you to me, Your Honor. Sorry. Sabrina pled guilty to murder, and she too received life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. Sabrina's lawyers argued that she never would have done what she did if it wasn't for Kevin manipulating her into doing it. They claim that Kevin had instructed her on how to kill Lisa, which included how to make it look like a burglary. Kevin told her if she was to get caught, that she should claim insanity or self-defense. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this case. Lisa had almost 200 knife wounds throughout her body. Did Sabrina take her life only because of Kevin's manipulation? Or is Sabrina a monster and Kevin just gave her an excuse to do what she already wanted to do?